Welcome back to Rock the JVM. I'm Daniel, and in this video, we are going to discuss dependent types in Scala, and in particular in Scala 3. Now, the original title of this video was supposed to be Path Dependent Types, Dependent Methods, and Dependent Functions, but because the title would have been too long, I'm just going to resort to dependent types. So, in this video, we're going to cover a bunch of stuff. We're going to cover nested types, path dependent types, where these path dependent types might be useful, how to define dependent methods, and dependent functions, which is exclusive to Scala 3. Now, the only thing that I'll require from you for this video is just your curiosity about Scala's type system and, of course, your desire to be up to date with Scala 3. Now, as always, I'll recommend that you try this code that I'm going to write in this video with me, and whatever you need to refresh your memory about these concepts, just refer back to this video or to the blog at the, the link in the description. So let's get back to our little project here because I created an object into a Scala 3 project in IntelliJ IDEA. So if you want to define a project here for Scala 3 in IntelliJ, you can go to File, New Project. And if you have the Scala plugin installed, you'll have the option to pick Scala here on the left and Dottie here on the right. And after you click Next, the wizard will be pretty straightforward, much like any other Scala project. So this should be quite straightforward. Now, for this project, I will not require any other libraries. We're just going to discuss plain Scala. Now, what I'm about to describe is not used very often, but when you do need something like this, it can prove very powerful. So, you're probably well aware that classes, objects, and traits in Scala can hold other classes, objects, and traits, as well as define abstract type members, or concrete type members as type aliases. For example, if I define a class, let's call this outer, we can define other things like class inner object, inner object, and type, let's call this inner type. This is an abstract type member. So you can define other classes, objects, and types inside other classes and objects and traits. Now, the question of using these types inside the outer class is pretty straightforward. You can just use an inner type. So for example, if I define inner equals new inner, this is perfectly acceptable, and you can use the inner type inside the scope of the outer class. Now, the question is, how would you use these inner types from outside the enclosing class? Now, for example, we would only be able to instantiate the inner type if we had access to an instance of outer. So, for example, if I define an outer as new outer, we can only instantiate an inner object by resorting to this outer instance. So I'm going to say val inner equals new outer dot inner. So this is how you would define an inner type based on the outer instance. Now, the interesting thing is what type this inner variable has. And the type of this inner variable is outer dot inner. So the type of this variable depends on the value of outer. So in other words, each instance of outer has its own nested types. So for example, it would be a type mismatch if we wrote something like this. I would define outer A as new outer. Let's call this outer B as new outer. And I'm going to, let's say val, let's call this inner A as outer A dot inner. So the type inner corresponding to the first instance. And on the right hand side, I would say new outer B dot inner. This would be a type mismatch. So the, um, the compiler takes a couple of seconds to identify this error. So we would have a type mismatch found outer B dot inner and required outer A dot inner. So notice that each instance of the outer type has its own inner type. So this would be a no-no. At the same time, objects are attached to every instance of outer. So if I said, let's call this outer a dot inner object equals outer b dot inner object, and I would try to print that out. So I would say print line this thing, assuming I can spell print line correctly. And let me define a main method and put this thing inside this expression would return false. And not only would it return false, but the inner object belong to different types. So if I run the small application, this would print false. So the inner objects are attached to the outer instances. 
So the inner classes are different, the inner objects are different, and also the abstract type members have no connection to one another between different outer instances. So this is the background for what I'm about to show you, which is path dependent types. So let's assume that we had a method in this class outer of the form that looks something like this. I'm going to define a method called, let's call this process. And I would ask that this process take an inner instance. And this just returns unit as in, and you can put in any implementation here like print line inner. The implementation doesn't really matter. I only care about the signature. And in particular, I only care about the argument type. So the process method is, a member of the outer class and it takes an inner instance. So for this kind of method, we can only pass inner instances that correspond to the outer instance that created them. So for example, if I have these outer A and outer B instances, if I define two inner instances, for example, let's call this inner A equals new outer A inner, and let's call this inner B as new outer B dot inner, so new inner instances corresponding to the two outer instances. Now, if I wanted to call the process method on outer A, I will only be able to pass inner A, but not inner B. So I would say outer A dot process, and I would only be able to pass in inner A, but not inner B. So this compiles, so the inner A is a proper argument for the process method. But if I try to use inner B, the type is a mismatch for the same reason that we discussed earlier. Now, the interesting thing is that once you define an inner class inside of an outer class, you automatically create a type, which is the parent of all these inner types, which are instance dependent. So these inner types is called an instance dependent type, all right? And um, I'm not even sure that this is an official uh, definition for it. I just like to call it instance dependent because it depends on an instance of the outer class. Now, a path dependent type would be a parent of all the instance dependent types. So a path dependent type is a parent of all instance dependent types. And the path dependent type is outer hash inner. So for example, I can add a process method in the class outer that takes an instance, which is of type outer hash inner, and both of these inner types would fit into that method. So for example, if I define a method called process, let's call this process general. And this inner argument is of type outer hash inner. And this will be a unit, which is, let's say, print line inner, I don't really care about the implementation, I only care about the method definition, the method signature, then this process general method can take both the inner A value and the inner B value, regardless on which instance you call that method. So you would say outer A dot process with inner A, and this is correct. So this is the instance dependent type, or you can say outer A dot process general, with inner A and inner B. So you can also say outer A process general with inner B. And all of these are correct because both inner A and inner B are subtypes of this outer hash inner. So this is correct. And the below line is also correct. But you cannot say outer A dot process inner B. So let me copy this one and show you the other case. So this is incorrect because this is a type mismatch. And I'm going to comment this out because this would not compile. So from the concept of nesting classes, objects, traits, and abstract type members inside other classes, traits, and objects, we got to this concept of a path dependent type. Now, here are a few examples why path dependent types might be useful. So for example, a number of libraries use path dependent types for type checking and type inference. 
For example, Aka Streams uses path-dependent types to automatically determine the appropriate stream type when you plug in components together. So for example, you might want to see in Aka Streams something like flow of type int, int, and some materialized value not used, for example, and use a hash wrapper here. So when you see hash wrapper, this is a path-dependent type that depends on the flow class or trait. All right. So this is one example where libraries use path dependent types for type checking and type inference. Another example is type lambdas because type lambdas used to rely exclusively on path dependent types in Scala 2 and they looked pretty hideous and you would use a structure type like type ta is list a and then you would pass a hash t at the very end and this particular type would also take type arguments and you would pass this to a higher kind of type. Now if this sounds alien to you watch the type lambdas video there I explain what type lambdas are why they're useful and what construct we have in Scala 3 because this particular structure is pretty impossible to read if you don't know what you're looking for. So in Scala 3 now we have a proper construct for that. Let's call this type lambdas in skull 3 and you would have a and then you would have a very fat arrow with double greater than signs and then you would say list a so this would be the equivalent type of what i wrote here this would be in skull 2 and in Scala 2, you would have to use a path dependent type to express the same concept because this was basically the only way that you would do it. So type lambdas are another kind of concept where path dependent types might prove useful. And type lambdas are pretty useful in very high level functional programming libraries like cats, where you would have functors and then you would pass this sort of types because those type classes are also higher kinded types. All right. So you would have type checking and type inference. You have type lambdas. And another use case is my pretty bananas use case for a type level programming use case. And I have a mini series here on YouTube that shows you how to define a type level sorting algorithm on types at compile time based on instance dependent types and implicits. So as you can see, the use cases for path dependent types are pretty abstract and they involve high level libraries. Now, I'm going to get back to earth a little bit and I'm going to show you something a little bit different. So I'm going to show you methods with dependent types, also called dependent methods for short. So with this background in place, and hopefully I've convinced you of the use cases of uh, path dependent types and instance dependent types, which I do agree they're pretty rare and they involve high level programming, but when you need this, it's pretty powerful. So with this background in place, we can now explore methods that rely on the type of the argument to return the appropriate type. So for example, if I define a trait, let's call this record, where we have a type member like type key, then you would be able to pass an instance of this record and return a value of this type key. So I'm going to define a method called get identifier that uh, passes a record of type record and I'm going to return record dot key. So this would be the return type of this method. So besides generics, this is the only technique that I know that would allow a method to return a different type depending on the value of the argument. So this can prove really powerful in libraries. And I just pressed the two key there for no apparent reason. And this has been available for the longest time. And so this is available in both Scala 2 and in Scala 3. Now the following thing is now available in Scala 3 exclusively, which is the capability of using functions taking dependent types. So for example, you cannot really turn this method into a function for higher order functions to pass that function as argument or to return that kind of function as a result. Now it's possible in Scala 3 by the introduction of dependent function types. So for example, we can assign this method to a function value. So I'm going to say val, let's call this get identifier function equals get identifier. 
the actual method. And the value of this function type, I want you to take a very careful look at that. Look at that. It says val get identifier func, which takes a record and returns a record dot key. So it already keeps track of what that uh, parameter is being called. And this function type is new in Skull 3, and it's a syntax sugar for, let's call this a class dependent function type as function one or extends function one where the uh, argument value is of type record and the return value is of type record hash key. So this is where the path dependent type gets into play and the um, apply method of this function takes a record and returns a v1.key. And v1.key is an instance dependent type, which is a subtype of the path dependent type as we showed earlier. So this is a proper override of this method. So this class is a syntax sugar for the function type that the compiler associates to this value. And the implementation of this apply method would be simply get identifier with that v1 record and you would simply instantiate a new function one so let's call this get identifier func2 as a new function one where the apply method looks like this so this what you're seeing right now is scala 3 exclusive prior to scala 3 you would not have this new function type record arrow record dot key so there you have it. We covered nested types and the need to create different types for different outer class instances. We explored path dependent types as the mother or the father of uh, all the instance dependent types. We went through some examples where path dependent types might be useful, generally in very high level libraries and code. And we also discussed dependent methods and dependent functions, which is exclusive to Scala 3. So I hope this helps. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this coming soon. And also follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn as I post fresh updates on upcoming material. Now I'm dying for feedback, so please leave your comments. I read every single one. And check out the Rock the JVM website. We have tons of material on Scala and Akka and Apache spark and cats and way 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 more incoming until next time i'm daniel signing off <laughs>